Well, hey, welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about why do joint ventures fail? Now, I'm a big fan of joint venture relationships, especially when it comes to doing uh, real estate deals, but you got to set them up right or else you could be in for some big trouble. That's what we're talking about here today. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the seven biggest reasons I've seen joint ventures fail. And more importantly, how you can avoid them. Reason number one that joint ventures fail is unrealistic expectations. And this is usually the active partner's fault. That means that when they're first proposing the joint venture, they show the best case scenario and that's all they show. So perhaps they're showing an actual deal and they're looking at projections and they're showing these projections to be 100% rosy with everything working 100% according to plan. And guess what? How often does that happen? Zero, <laughs> all right? So I know I made this mistake back in the day. I would show off my best deals ever as a case study. I was so proud of those deals. I wanted to show them off. So I'd put them in my presentation and I'd say, hey, here's the kind of deal I were doing. Here's an example of one, and here's how it worked out. And it would be fantastic. So there'd be great returns. Everything worked out perfectly, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the challenge. It sets up a false expectation. Why? Because I showed people my home run deal. And what are the chances that I'm going to hit a home run every single time? Zero. All right. So here's the solution for that. You want to follow Tom Peters advice. Always under promise and do your best to over deliver. So in my case, what I started doing is I would show plain Jane deals. I would show a very average deal and say, hey, this is how the deals typically work. Sometimes they're a bit better. Sometimes they're not quite so good. Every deal is a little bit different, but here's how this deal worked. And then I would show a very average kind of a deal and set the expectations at a reasonable level. And then it'd be pretty easy for me to exceed those expectations. Now, if you're showing an actual deal, instead of showing the best case scenario projections, dial it down several notches. So again, do your best so that you can actually exceed what you're showing people. Because if you exceed those, then you're going to look like a hero. They're going to want to reinvest with you. And just as importantly, they're going to want to refer you to their friends and their family members. Now, the second reasons I've seen joint ventures fail is because of loosey goosey agreements. So let's say that you do a joint venture arrangement with a close friend or a family member and you do it on spit and a handshake. Well, that's a big, big, big issue. And this leads to all sorts of challenges, right? Because he said, she said, different memories, nothing's written down. Uh, they might have false expectations. You might have said something you didn't mean to say. You don't have it in writing, and that is just a surefire way for things to go sideways. So the solution for that is very simple. Even if you're going to have your joint venture partner be your mom, your brother, a close friend or relative, treat it as if you're working with a complete stranger. If you're working with a complete stranger, especially if you're working at a credit investor, they're going to want to get independent legal advice to take a look over the joint venture agreement. So you're going to have to have a joint venture agreement put together by a lawyer. Your lawyer looks over it. Their lawyer looks over it. You're going to have to have everything set up properly. So uh, regular, regular meetings, regular accountability, regular payments, all of this stuff is set out right up front. So do the exact same thing, even if you're working with a close friend or a family member. The third reason I see joint ventures failing is because the joint venture partner, the money partner, doesn't really understand what they're getting into, right? They, they thought they had the idea, they thought they had the gist, but they really didn't. And this usually comes down to the initial presentation, how you presented the deal in the first place. So again, that's the importance of having a really good, well-laid-out, well-structured slideshow presentation. And that's why it's so important when you've got an actual deal on the table that you've got everything in writing so they know exactly what it's all about, what they're getting into, and you've explained it in plain English. You haven't just let them go to their own, own devices to figure things out. So you want to have everything in very, very easy to understand format, starting with your investor presentation. So to get that understanding up front, that's going to avoid a lot of confusion down the road. The fourth reason I see joint ventures fail is because the operator does a crappy job, right? <laughs> they get a a partner on board, they get a joint venture partner on board, they get the deal going, and then they slack. 
or they're just too loosey-goosey, or they're not on top of things, or they, they, the deal drags out. They, if they're doing a burr, it just drags out way too long. They're disorganized. They're not paying people on time. They aren't reporting on time. They're not letting people know about challenges until the last minute. They're, they haven't put in a contingency fund, so they're doing cash calls. These kind of things tend to really turn off joint venture partners and cause deals to fail. The fifth reason I see joint ventures fail is because the joint venture partner was pressured into doing the deal. So this happens sometimes with close friends or family members where the active investor kind of twists their arm or peer pressures them or cajoles them or kind of convinces them against their will to invest in the deal. And then the deal goes along for a while and the person gets cold feet and they want to get out of that deal. So what's the solution to that? It's very, very simple. Never pressure anybody into investing with you. In fact, if you follow my process, you never have to. You're just going to show people an opportunity and allow them to invest with you because they want to, not because they feel obligated to, not because they feel pressured to do it. Another reason I see joint ventures fail is because there isn't a clause in the joint venture agreement, or they don't have a joint venture agreement, that allows for an early exit for the joint venture partner. So your joint venture agreement should have some sort of clause in there that says, hey, if you need to get out of this deal, here's exactly what's going to happen. Here's what the consequences are going to be. So the person thinks they can just get in and out of the deal anytime they want. But if you've got a clause in there that shows them that there's a penalty for exiting early from this deal because of the pain in the butt that it causes you, then they're much less likely to want to do that. And then last but not least, one of the reasons I see joint ventures failing is just because of life happening for your joint venture partner. What could this look like? It could look like death. That'll put a crimp on things. It could be divorce. It could be having to relocate during, due to a job. It could be job loss. It could be bankruptcy. All sorts of different personal and financial situations can come up that cause the person to need to exit the deal, to collapse the deal early. But again, if you take my advice from the, the previous tip, you want to make sure that you've got a, an escape clause in your joint venture agreement, not so much an escape clause, an exit clause in there that covers exactly what's going to happen should any of those things happen. So really, really important to have that good joint venture agreement that everybody understands up front and center. Now, with all this talk about all of the different problems that can come up with a joint venture, you might be a little bit concerned about doing it, but here's the bottom line. It's really, really easy, as I pointed out, to mitigate or minimize the chances of any of these happening things happening. And bottom line is doing joint ventures is the absolute best way for you to grow and scale your portfolio faster than you could ever do it on your own. So you want to make sure that you're doing joint ventures. Now, if you're interested in doing joint ventures and attracting joint venture partners, I've got something that you might like. And it's a free copy of my book, Money Partner Formula. I'm going to have the link in the description below. Or you can go grab a copy at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Get your copy today.